So, our podcast is slightly different today. You may be wondering, Molly, why is producer of all Baby Doll Films Project, Wendy Jones, sat in the same room as her? We're not breaking COVID rules, everybody. She's my mama. Hey! So, we are going to chat all things producing. So, our Wends, you're not a film producer by trade, are you? So, no. tell us how you ended up doing that. Well, um, I've worked with our writer-director, Carlton Paris, for a long, long time, uh, but mainly in theatre. So a lot of um, our baby dog actors will know us from our plays that we've all worked in together. Um, and I've always been uh, behind the scenes as well as out in front on stage, doing a lot of the producer type work that you would find in any production, scheduling, booking theatres, organising props, costumes, the whole kind of thing. Yeah. So when we were kind of um, progressing once here on Blackpool Sands into a film, mm. um, it was kind of a natural progression that I would continue to take that role and let yeah. Carl carry on and do his writer-director role. So what is the difference between theatre producing and like film and TV producing stuff? Um, I would say it's probably... Um, that's a bad one. I would say it's probably a bit more intense. So um, having worked in theatre for a long time, mm -hmm. I kind of knew everything um, that was expected to get a production yeah. out on stage. Film is very different because it's a major kind of logistical operation before yeah. you even get to performance. So it's slightly different. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think for me, the biggest thing was I had to learn a new language. Yeah, I'd always worked in like theatrical language, but a bit like, like Spanish or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> just things like you know, just the camera language, the yeah, the way that the crew would speak, their demands, you know, and yeah. just looking at something on a a call sheet, you know, was just different to looking at a rehearsal schedule. Yeah, because they're all different like formats and stuff, aren't they? They're not like you call time and that's it. That's what time you come into rehearsal. It's mm. like we well, have to be here, and then this is the weather, and this is the and I'm, yeah, absolutely. And that's the other thing in theatre. You always go somewhere. You're inside somewhere, and that's it. And that's you stay it. There. You stay there, and you've normally got um, things like a restaurant. You've normally got bathrooms. You've got access to facilities. <laughs> um, on a film set, especially if you're outside. Your producer has to find out where the nearest toilets are, uh, what's the weather, yeah. and all the amazing challenges that come up, um, especially on location, that you would you probably get the same challenges in a theatrical production, yeah. like a light would go or something like that. Yeah. But you'd have something right there to be able to go and replace it. Yeah. Instead of on location, you've got to hair off to the nearest Tesco to find <laughs> a bar or a bar, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of filming on location for Moonfish just before... No, they are both before Christmas. Mm. Moonfish and Wings yeah. just both before Christmas. So, Wings, it's a nice, lovely inside apartment. It's gorgeous, very yeah. nice. Moonfish wasn't, was it? No. What um, happened on Moonfish? Well, tell us. So Moonfish um, was filmed, um, the, the, the trailer that we're, we're putting together, um, you know, part of the scenes came out of this kind of on location. Yeah. A uh, few days that we did up in Cumbria. Um, so we had the Cumbria weather to deal with. And um, yeah, um, day one, the shoot was absolutely, uh, yeah, on point. Um, it was great, herring around, um, you know. Day two, we moved location. Um, so I kind of moved off to the second kind of location, mm -hmm. uh, leaving people to wrap up the previous scene. And um, it was a beach scene yeah. um, on a different part of the Cumbrian coast. And when we actually did the location scouting, yeah, the tide was out. It looked really nice. Lovely sunny day. Lovely sunny day. Very nice. Yeah, so all pristine. Um, and the great British weather waded in. <laughs> and I got there with a, a another colleague, actor friend of mine, who was supporting me in terms of that shift. And uh, yeah, the tide was in, the sort of beach Wait. and gone, all of the location. And uh, yeah, it all kind of turned up half an hour earlier than it should. The wind got up. Um, so the waves were like 12 foot high instead of just nicely lapping them. Yeah. So very quickly, we had to uh, vomit back to the previous location and I had to advise the director and the director of photography. Yeah. You will have to look for another location. Yeah, you, we, we, we didn't go to the second location. <laughs> that is not even a spoiler. It didn't, no, it no, didn't. no. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's very different than being in theatre. 
Yes, it is. So when we were looking for that second location, whilst you were hearing it back from the other side of the coast, we um, walked up that beach that way, back this beach that way. There was a lot of, so it's very, nothing's in one place, like you say, like you have to go everywhere and look for everything. Um, like even when if, when you like somebody wanted to go to the toilet on location, it was like a ten minute walk back up the beach. Off you go. And it was freezing. There was so many spiders. <laughs> um, I don't know. So what are the challenges of not just filming on location, but when you're producing a film or a TV series or whatever? What what are the hardest bits about doing that? So I think what people uh, don't see it's a bit. It's a bit like an iceberg. You see the the bit at the top, which is, you know, arriving on set, you know, getting stuck in, you've got your actors. Telling got, people what to do. Yeah, it's not that. No, I don't do that. The directors, <laughs> so, um, I just make sure everything's happening in the background. People get fed water and moved in the right place, <laughs> turn up at the right time. Um, that's the bit that is probably um, the output yeah. and the most enjoyable. All the organisation beforehand yeah. is the hardest bit. And that's really, you know, starts from um, just things like assembling the script into mm -hmm. the right format, yeah. creating the right sides for um, auditions or call sheets, um, and just really liaising with all the actors as well. Because yeah. when you think it's it's a major yeah. um, operation, you've got actors that could be travelling across all parts of the country, yeah. you know, what time are they arriving, just the whole schedule work for them, you know, even things like I had to leave lots of contingencies yeah, um, because it's my job to make sure the director and the director of photography have people there at the right time to yeah. do that schedule. Um, so things like people arriving on the first train, have yeah. we got contingency in case that train is late? Can yeah. we? So you have to plug in and play with a lot of moving parts yeah. to make sure that the shoot runs no matter what. Yeah. That all happens way before that first call on that first day. Yeah. And that's the biggest challenge. Is it harder to do it, obviously, during a pandemic as well, where like there are less trains and you know you have to make sure that you can't like people can't carpool together like everybody needs to be driving some people might get stuck in traffic some people might like there's no everybody has to be separate so mm -hmm. does that take more work do you think than when we started filming Black Blue Sands like way 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 before the pandemic yeah it does because it's it's just something that you didn't have to think about before yeah your actors will travel they'll travel either together um, or they will catch trains it doesn't yeah. really matter and in a normal kind of environment you've got plenty of options yeah whereas right now it's kind of you know we have to think about short and schedules to yeah. they need to come down the night before um, and then actually the logistics mm -hmm. so um just simple things like on location where we could have an Airbnb and you can have that yeah. atmosphere that everybody, you've got a crew yeah, house, like you've got an access house. house. Yeah. But, you know, um, I have to say, you know, even though we had to kind of separate people, yeah. um, the production room was, you know, everybody um, was in there adhering to, you know, social distancing and it still was a great atmosphere. Yeah, it was. It was nice, wasn't it? Apart from when I spent 85 years on the phone to Domino's because there was so many but it was fine it was fine um so does it have its advantages though of when we're filming on location it's not i suppose the pandemic doesn't really change things when we're inside but especially when we're on location because when we were doing blackpool sounds there was a day when we were on the pier i was being your little production assistant i was being your runner i wasn't acting that day and it was my sole job to stand at the door from the arcade to the pier so we'd like had the pier like cordoned off like it was ours for the day but the arcade was still open and there was like families with like toddlers and they kept opening the door and they were like oh no she but she just wants to go she just wants to look at the sea she just wants to do this i'm sorry i'm not allowed mm -hmm. so but obviously when we were on location uh, just before christmas we had none of that because nobody was allowed there it was great so are there like like little background advantages to not having to deal with the general public on location as well um, it's it's an interesting point obviously the first answer, straight answer is yes yeah. because when we were in Cumbria nobody was around it was and it was quiet and we didn't have to um 
you know, worry too much about passing traffic and yeah. stuff like that and stopping shooting because we had, you know, cars coming past or anything like that or yeah. noise. But part of the creative industry is the fact that you do get to engage with the public. Yeah, that's and so true. Blackpool Sands was great fun when we were filming because that particular day on the pier, the uh, the arcade was open and yeah. we had the pier. Um, but so many like um, customers of the arcade came mm. up and wanted to know about the film and, yeah. and it was a pleasure to talk about it and they were they were so intrigued at how a film is made yeah. um, and even in Cumbria you know people were walking the dogs on the beach and it was just yeah, they were so nice. respectful they yeah. could see there was a scene going on mm. like 100 meters and they stopped because I was positioned yeah. 100 meters away <laughs> back but they, back. yeah but they were they were just like so you know, I'll keep the dog quiet and I yeah. just said look you know we, we are filming in a public area yeah with permission of the local councils of course but with the respect that you know uh, the the public will have rights of way and, yeah and um, but they're, they're always so nice to talk to yeah and you, you know more than anything they'll do everything and go out of the way to make sure they don't disrupt what's going on yeah so generally it's 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 nice um it's just a little bit easier if you don't have as much corralling yeah. to do. So we didn't have to have as many people doing that job. Like you were helping with about two or three other people yeah. on that day. And we had to make sure people were well, we went one way and yeah. we had to stop them when there was a particular scene. And we had full permission to do that. Um, but we also let them out on the pier to say, look, if you want to come and have a look, that's fine. Just do yeah. it in between these tents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so do you have advice for anybody who wants to get into producing so like obviously like we said before you you didn't go to uni to train to be a film producer you didn't like this is something relatively new to you especially when we were doing Blackpool Sands do you have any advice for anyone who wants to kind of transition because you've always acted you've always you know been in the plays and mm -hmm. in the films and stuff like that even the films that you're producing you have roles in so do you do you have any advice for people who do either want to make that transition or just want to get into producing what what should they be aware of so i think you need to one of the things that i did from, from the get-go and you'll know that is you know i literally buried my head in the internet um research materials just to make sure not that you know did I have to kind of learn anything? Yeah. Because all the principles of creating a theatrical production transfer really well. Yeah. Um, into film, there's just a lot more to do with, yeah, with yeah. film, really. Um, I I would probably you know um get yourself onto a film set just to see how it works. Yeah. And just watch the production team, um, doing their day to day uh, job. And um, also, um, I be, belong, I'm a member of Women in Film and TV, and they do an awful lot of, um, you can just pay an annual, annual subscription, there's different levels, obviously, I, I want to do, um, I'm part of the production side of it. Um, but they're really supportive, especially if you're a woman and you want yeah. to get into it, because it's very male-dominated domin still, but, um, you know, um, join these kind of, um, uh, what's the word? organizations organizations yeah join these organizations because you know you'll have a lot of people who are starting out a lot of people who are offering to just mentor but you, you have online membership sessions yeah and they set up lots of things so when we were doing um the filming in cumbria i went on to a great session um that was really um centered on the production team that delivered Yes, you know, you can do it. I know you. I know you know it. It's called the third day. Yeah. Well, on. So um, I was lucky enough to um, get onto a session with the production team of Third Day, which was a TV series with Jude Law and Naomi Watts was in the third. And what was really interesting is that the three kind of um, seasons of that were all different directors, and the one I wanted to watch was a female director and the female production team around it yeah and they filmed it on an island so what was really great was that that team were having the same challenges that I was having yeah about the tide coming in or the tide not coming in the weather turning you know they had to completely shift things out of the way because you know the scene decided to to shift you know it's pattern yeah. in, in the turn of a you know a minute um and it was just great and 
and by doing that you, you can you can make contact with other people so mm -hmm. i've gone on to other sessions and you know um they invite you to kind of chat and yeah. just learn a little bit more about the industry but you've just got to you know be in it yeah. i guess you know just you don't have to i mean there are lots you can go and get a degree in it you can do you can do all that yeah the, i went through kind of theatrical production to get to film production yeah um and but you don't have to i guess you yeah. can go the the educational route but just get in the mix and you know independent film companies like baby dog films you might see opportunities where you could say actually can i just come and be part of it yeah um and volunteer we've had lots of people come to us yeah and um, who've been out of university um it just said i've got this skill set that's what I, my education is can i come and just do that and get yeah. some on set experience with you yeah and we're very open to things like that yeah so do you think it's worth like finding smaller indie companies like ours that might have that availability for you to just come on and run or come on and i don't know be like third camera assistant or something like that just get like get involved yeah and that that is it because only by getting involved with you a find out if you actually like it because yeah. i do think you know it's not glamorous for anybody out there that thinks it's glamorous it's not it's <laughs> really really hard work um, and I often say I would rather act all day yeah. than actually produce all day yeah. in terms of physical sheer effort because yeah. it's hard. You yeah. know, you've got a lot of moving parts. You have to be in a million places at once. You've got people asking you questions. I guess, you know, and questions which are very random. So I think with Moonfish, you know, I remember sitting there with the guy who did our props, you know, saying, have you got a plastic bag? Have you got any fishing twine? Can we go to Argos and get a pump? Can we? Because they wanted to suddenly make this underwater effect out of nothing because they just thought it'd be great to do and the director would do the director of photography loved it. And I think we've got some behind the scenes pictures of Louis yeah, sitting so there funny. sewing a plastic bag with twine or yeah. whatever. They are on the Instagram for those. Yeah. Uh, and that wasn't on the set list of stuff that I had to deal with that day, but it was like, can you? Because we we, we want to do it and we yeah. know it's gonna so. It did look really good actually on the on the thing it looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for coming on to my little podcast. Oh, you're very welcome. Do you have just a final final piece of I suppose what I want is a little sneaky tidbit of something that we're allowed to know right now. Is there anything exciting that you can reveal exclusively on the podcast for us to do with any of the projects that are coming that up? Is... Can I have a t can I have a tidbit? No. <laughs> no. Uh, what we'll say is um, it's a very very exciting time for baby dog films. Um, we are refusing to be held back by all this pandemic we we're staying positive our actors are staying positive and supporting us as um, and so are our investors yeah. um, and um in terms of all i will say is watch this space because um our first feature film uh, we are moving forward with that and um watch this space with that and um yeah it's really exciting we have big plans for this year um to to get our film projects out the door exciting well thank you so much for joining me mama i will let you go and glamorously do whatever you're doing now thanks for joining us guys bye bye bye, bye.